Welcome to my series 100 Scientists Who Influenced the World, where I've taken a diverse mix of people and broken them down into 10 different categories. There are some famous scientists as well as some lesser known ones, but all of these people have had an influence on the world. Chemists are in their element when experimentation leads to new discoveries and developments through breaking down substances, understanding their chemical composition, then throwing other things into the mix. This work has triggered a chain reaction of monumental discoveries over centuries. So who are some of these clever chemists? Antoine Lavoisier Antoine Lavoisier was born in 1743 in France as the first child and only son of a wealthy family. He attended one of the best secondary schools in France before going on to study law like his father and grandfather had. However, there weren't many demands made on his time by his legal studies, so he spent a lot of time attending lectures on physics and chemistry. Lavoisier did not continue to work as a lawyer and instead pursued a career in science. He was fortunate that he had inherited a large sum of money which he had invested into an enterprise which made him even more money. Although chemistry was his passion, he devoted the majority of his time to managing his financial dealings. This did not stop Lavoisier from making a huge impact on chemistry. While studying combustion, Lavoisier set out to either experimentally prove or disprove the main theory of the time. By designing experiments to indicate what the main active part of combustion is, Lavoisier discovered it was oxygen, and that combustion was a process of oxidation, though this did require findings from another influential chemist, Joseph Priestley, to confirm it. This understanding of the role of oxygen in combustion is fundamental to understanding almost all chemical reactions. Lavoisier also discovered the law of the conservation of mass, that substances may change state, like from liquid to solid, but their mass, the amount of stuff they're made of, stays the same. This principle is a basis of modern chemistry. Sir Ernest Rutherford Ernest Rutherford was born in 1871 in New Zealand as the fourth of twelve children, and his parents denied themselves comforts to make sure their children could be well educated. After receiving his degrees at university, he was granted a scholarship to conduct research at Cambridge University before moving to a university job in Canada. While researching the effects of X-rays on gases, and this work led to the discovery of electrons, which are small parts of atoms, Rutherford also discovered two types of radiation that are different from X-rays, naming these alpha rays and beta rays. He discovered that samples of radioactivity lost size as it decayed, and he calculated its half-life, how long it takes for half the atoms in something to decay into a new radioactive substance. This discovery led on to radioactivity being used to age objects or rocks, most notably by paleontologists, and is known as radiocarbon dating. Although Marie Curie had already suggested that radioactivity was atomic, the idea of the atoms of a radioactive substance breaking up was a radical new idea, and resulted in Rutherford being awarded the Nobel Prize in Chemistry alongside Frederick Soddy. These discoveries that Rutherford made changed what people knew and understood about different elements, paving the way for future chemists to build on his work and advance the discipline of chemistry. The chemical element Rutherfordium was named in his honour in 1997. Johns Jacob Berzelius Johns Jacob Berzelius was born in 1779 in Sweden. Berzelius attended university to study medicine before serving as a professor of medicine and pharmacy. Berzelius was also a member of the Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences and an early Swedish supporter of the new chemistry proposed a generation earlier by Antoine Lavoisier. As Berzelius became more interested in chemistry, he wanted to further explore the relationships between elements. However, he found very little information on the topic, so he set out to write his own textbook, backed by experiments designed and conducted in his laboratory. Through precise experimentation, his extraordinary skills of interpretation, Berzelius was able to calculate the atomic weight of different elements, providing further evidence to the atomic theory which had been proposed by John Dalton. Berzelius also decided to create his own way of identifying the elements he was writing about in a simpler form. By abbreviating the Latin names for elements, Berzelius developed a system where elements can be identified by one or two letters. This system could also be used to describe the atomic makeup of substances and the number of atoms involved, such as H2O for water, two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. Both above developments were published in his textbook, changing how chemistry is written to this day. 
Dorothy Crowfoot Hodgkin. Dorothy Crowfoot Hodgkin was born in 1910 in Egypt. Hodgkin's parents both worked as archaeologists in North Africa and the Middle East, so she spent much of her childhood apart from her parents and was instead raised by her grandparents. Hodgkin became interested in chemistry and crystals when she was 10 and she was encouraged by her mother to pursue this interest. She attended the University of Oxford to study physics and chemistry with the final year of her course focusing on crystallography, which was a new field of science which explored the arrangement of atoms in solids. When Hodgkin graduated, she became an expert in crystallography and set about studying penicillin, which was known to be able to cure infections, but its structure was unknown. Hodgkin used x-rays exploring how the light would bend to work out the arrangement of the atoms, completing the structure of penicillin in 1945. Hodgkin's study of penicillin, vitamin B12 and other chemicals won Hodgkin the Nobel Prize for Chemistry in 1964. She also studied the structure of insulin, the hormone that controls sugar in the blood, and her work on its structure helped develop treatments for diabetes, a disease which causes high levels of sugar in the blood. Hodgkin's pioneering work in crystallography helped improve global medicine and healthcare. Alice Ball Alice Ball was an African-American chemist who was born in 1892 in the United States. Her mother, father and grandfather were all photographers, which may have inspired her love for chemistry as her family were using chemical processes to develop their photographs. Ball was interested in science in high school and went on to study pharmaceutical chemistry and pharmacy at the University of Hawaii, becoming the first African American and the first woman to graduate with a master's degree from that university. Ball also became the first African American and the first woman to teach chemistry at the University of Hawaii. For centuries, oil from the Chomugra tree had been used as a treatment for leprosy, a life-threatening condition that damages the skin and the nervous system. Ball researched the use of this oil, which was normally applied to the skin, and she developed a highly effective injectable form of the oil extract to relieve the symptoms. This method of treating leprosy is known as the Ball method and remained the best method for treating leprosy until the 1940s. Sadly, Ball died at the age of 24 not long after developing the oil extract and it wasn't until decades later that she received the recognition that she deserved. The only Chilmugra tree at the University of Hawaii features a plaque to commemorate her and the 29th February is Alice Ball Day in Hawaii, celebrated every leap year. Percy Julian Percy Julian was an African-American scientist born in 1899 in the United States as the first of six children. His grandfather had been a slave in America, however both of his parents were graduates of Alabama State University. His father worked in the railway service of the United States Post Office and his mother was a school teacher. Julian attended DePaul University in Indiana, however he faced a lot of racism in the town, struggling to find somewhere to sleep or eat. Despite graduating and being a very promising scientist, Julian could not continue his education to PhD level in the United States, again due to racism, so secured funding to complete this in Austria. Julian then had to overcome more racial discrimination when trying to secure a research position back in the United States. Eventually, Julian secured a position as a research associate at DePaul University, where he made his first big breakthrough. Julian became the first person to synthesise a drug which could be used to treat the eye disease glaucoma. He was then hired as a director of research at Chicago's Glidden Company and focused his research mainly on the properties of the soybean plant. During his career, Julian was awarded with around 130 patents. By figuring out how to synthesise medicinal compounds from plants, Julian helped make steroids like cortisone and birth control pills much more affordable to produce, and even developed a fire retardant foam that was used widely during the Second World War. Dmitry Mendeleev Dmitry Mendeleev was born in 1834 in Russia, the youngest of 14 children. He achieved a master's degree and began to conduct research in organic chemistry. Financed by the government, Mendeleev went abroad to study at the University of Heidelberg. However, he decided not to socialise with the other chemists working there, including Robert Bunsen, whom the Bunsen burner is named after. When Mendeleev returned to Russia and began teaching in organic chemistry, he could not find a textbook that suited his needs. Having previously published an award-winning textbook, he decided to write another one, Principle of Chemistry, which became a classic. Towards the end of the first volume of the textbook, Mendeleev was comparing the properties of halogen elements and alkali metals. Mendeleev identified that although these elements were quite different, there were similarities in the pattern of their atomic weights and wondered if this was true of other groups. 
Mendeleev went through the known elements and organised them into groups based on how heavy they are. This is what led to the production of the first periodic table, grouping the known elements together and even leaving spaces for undiscovered elements. Initially this had very little impact on chemistry, however the discoveries of gallium, scandium and germanium, elements predicted by Mendeleev's table, it began to win widespread acceptance. By forming the periodic table, Mendeleev laid the foundation for modern chemistry. This guide to the atomic structures of elements remains the most important tool for scientists and students alike. Alfred Nobel Alfred Nobel was born in 1833 in Sweden. When he was young, his family moved to St. Petersburg, Russia, where his father opened a torpedo works. Nobel dedicated his time to studying explosives, most specifically to the safe production and use of nitroglycerin, discovered in 1847 by Ascanio Sobrero. Through his research, Nobel discovered that if nitroglycerin is mixed with an absorbent inactive substance, it is safer and easier to work with. Nobel patented this mixture in 1867 under the name dynamite. Dynamite became widely used in mining and in warfare. Nobel continued to try different combinations and developed even more powerful explosives and gunpowders. Nobel's manufacture of explosives made him very wealthy and his family were surprised to find when he died that he had left all his wealth aside to form the Nobel Prize, an annual prize to be given for achievements in science, literature and peace. Since 1901, the Nobel Prize has been awarded every year on 10th December, the anniversary of his death. Gertrude B. Elian Gertrude Elian was born in 1918 in the United States. As she grew up, Elian wanted to pursue a job in science. However, this was not easy for women at the time due to the Great Depression. As a result, Elian worked many jobs such as lab assistant, food analyst and high school teacher for years while earning her master's degree in chemistry at night. During World War II, Elian was employed as a biochemist at the Wellcome Research Laboratories, now part of GlaxoSmithKline, and this is where she made her huge contributions not just to chemistry but to the world. Elian was focused on developing new drugs for diseases. She developed the first immunosuppressive drug for organ transplants, greatly improving the success rate, developed treatments for different types of cancer, notably one which is still used today to treat leukaemia, and developed new treatments for herpes. Elian retired in 1983 but continued to make important scientific contributions and was passionate about encouraging women to pursue a career in science. In 1988, she was awarded the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine, along with her colleagues George Hitchings and Sir James Black, for the treatments they developed, which have saved countless lives over the years. Marie Maynard Daly Marie Maynard Daly was an African-American scientist born in 1921 in the United States. While in high school, Daly was encouraged to pursue a career in chemistry, so she enrolled in a fairly small college in New York to allow her to live at home and save money while studying. Daly completed her bachelor's degree in 1942, finishing in the top 2.5% of her class. At this time, there was a need for scientists to help support the war effort. Daly worked as a laboratory assistant while achieving her master's degree and then worked as a chemistry tutor while receiving her PhD. She was the first African-American woman to receive a PhD in chemistry. Daly's initial research focused on the assembly of proteins within cells, the structure of the cell nucleus and histones, proteins that provide structural support for packets of DNA. Later in her career, she studied how cholesterol relates to high blood pressure and how muscle cells use creatine which plays an important role in energy usage. Daly also worked hard to increase the uptake of university science programmes by racial minorities. She even established a scholarship fund in her father's name to support African American science students. Thank you for watching this video in my series 100 Scientists Who Influenced the World. The majority of the information for this video came from the books 100 Scientists Who Made History and the Britannica Guide to the 100 Most Influential Scientists. If you liked this video please hit the like and subscribe buttons and be sure to check out my other videos such as my STEM experiment and explanation videos, my robotics videos and my STEM career interviews. This has been STEM with Mr N's 100 scientists who influenced the world, clever chemists.